Tannenbaus. This is about the first oil painting. Yes. My first oil painting that I did was of a ballet dancer. Yeah, that's what we... How old were you when that? I was 15, just 16. How it happened? No, um, there was a, a ballet girl that I really liked in the ballet class. Her name was Tamsin Staples, and I had a crush on her, and I painted her. That was the first oil painting I did. And after that? So that's the beginning of the journey, of the journey as a painter. That is, yes. So what happened after you done that painting? Now, then it became more serious, no more ballet dances. I started to, you know, paint all sorts of different subjects. And uh, I was always interested in history. And my parents encouraged my interest in history. But um, the problem... So how do you move from ballet into history, painting and battle? Um, well, it was a long process. I always had an interest in history, but I mean, in, in South Africa, it's a young country. They don't have a great sense of the past, you know, beyond what happened in Africa. And it was a lot of the history that existed there was only a, a colonial history, because at that time, apartheid was um, there was an apartheid government in South Africa, and they would only allow one view of history to be. Uh, projected or, or given to people. Um, and I, at the same time, I was looking, in order to learn to draw and paint, I was looking at a lot of um, pictures of American, of the American West, because there are a lot of very good American painters, you know, like Frederick Remington, uh, Charles Russell, um, Charles Scribe They were very technically competent painters. But what I picked up in those paintings was that all these pictures of the American West were all, of, all about the American army, American cowboys conquering Indians. And it was all f from their point, point of view. It was purely from the American point of view. There was nothing to express the other side, how the Indians felt. It was always a US Army perception of the world. You know, American manifest destiny. Well, it was, and it, it, it was difficulty. I've had this difficulty my whole life because my personal feeling is I would like to be able to have the technical competence to paint as well as these American or French painters from the 19th century. Um, but I would like to show things from a more rounded perspective. For instance, I'd like to show, say, the Battle of Little Bighorn from the Indian point of view or the Zulu War to show Zulus as well as uh, just the British, you know show people, in, in basic terms I'd like to paint people of colour, not just white people, because the world isn't only full of white people, there are lots of other people. And I've noticed that with imperialist, um, imperialist politics, imperialist history, imperialist art, very often it's only white people who are shown, and black people or coloured people are not represented, or Indian people, they're, they're not shown other than as a, as a cipher. Latin America, it's a long, been a long journey, but for me it started when I saw the statue of Simon Bolivar in um, Central Park in New York when I was on holiday there. That's where it started. What captured my interest was that it was very Napoleonic. Um, I originally thought that this was uh, some, one of Napoleon's marshals, a French marshal, you know, like Davou or Ney or Bessier. It or actually means a lot. I learned this when doing Napoleonic pictures because at that time, during the Napoleonic time, uh, the reason they dressed in these uniforms was it was a, a social and a political statement of allegiance. And uh, if you chose to dress a certain way, you were actually saying something about yourself and your beliefs and, and you know, where you felt society was going. So the, whole, the way Napoleon dressed his army, it was supposed to be uh, a spirit of change and revolution in Europe. And uh, Simon Bolivar appropriated these ideas as well because he felt the same way. He wanted to revolutionize South America and throw out the old order, bring in a new order. So and you see this in art, in painting. A lot of the Napoleonic paintings by Jericho, by um, Antoine Gros, Gros, uh, Gros uh, by um, David, they all have a sort of a, a vibrant revolutionary spirit. And the way people are dressed, the clothing, the way they behave, it's a very sort of positive forward image. It's all the blue and the white and the red. It's a very revolutionary colors. Um, but what made the Venezuelan army so different, or South American Liberation Army so different, was that it included everybody. They're very inclusive. Yeah. Um, 
again, you know, you get back to the European armies, there's a tendency to show them as only sort of white and that, and those, you know, and everyone else is not really represented. Whereas um, the Venezuelan Liberation Army was, wasn't exclusive in that way, it was inclusive. Bolivar included everybody. And I mean, uh, there's a painting of um, San Martin. I think it's an Argentinian painting, San Martin reviewing a battalion of free Negroes um, in 1806. And that's interesting, simply because you don't often see that painted. And, you know, Simon Bolivar himself included everybody in the army. Anyone who wanted to fight for freedom, an army of the people. He had Indians, he had blacks, he had low-class people. Everybody, every strat of society was able to work together in his army and fight the, 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 the Spanish system at the time. And if I was to paint that, that's what I would find interesting about it, was that you could paint a Napoleonic picture, but inclusive of all the different people, not just everyone in their social place in their social class. You know, that, that, that would fascinate me. And that's the one I actually wanted to do. Yeah, Bolivar and Miranda had spent time in England because I was aware that uh, the South American liberation movement, if you want to call it that, um, were supported by the British and were supported by the Duke of Wellington. And I'm also aware that British soldiers went to South America to fight with Simon Bolivar. They had a British legion fighting with him. You know, a lot of people, veterans from Waterloo. So again, you know, it's a very strong Napoleonic link. I was amazed that it had been kept in the same state as it would have been in, in the 1800s. I mean, like there was no heaters, there were very few plugs, and there were no toilets. You know, I just wondered how people lived then, but anyway, no flushing toilets. You know so, I mean, you know, it, it's... it's Life must have been pretty harsh then, you know, a lot of the, you know, there's no, no taps, no running water. But anyway, um, the, the painting was to show a, a, a meeting. Okay, I want to extend my best wishes to the people of Venezuela and the government of Venezuela and pre to President Hugo Chavez and to Ambassador Samuel Moncada. Um, this painting has been a great opportunity for me to learn more about South American history. Um, that's the interesting thing about being commissioned to do work like this, is you just learn so much more. It gives you a much greater insight into what happened at the time. And also, what's really nice about this particular painting is that it's, it's not a formal picture. It's not a formal painting. It's not a formal government painting. It's not a formal battle painting. It's informal. So you're getting the opportunity to bring people from the past alive, which is quite a difficult thing to do. Um, and in a painting like this, you do it through expression, attitude, you know, perhaps the clothing they wear. I mean, you're exaggerating things slightly. I mean, it's, it's, it's obviously composed. It's composed informality. But uh, it does try to bring across the behavior of the people at that time. You know, a delegation, a, a Venezuelan government delegation in London lobbying for independence and lobbying for support from Britain in order to implement that in independence. It's also very good to be able to learn more about these people as individuals, Francisco de Miranda, Simon Bolivar especially, um, that they had a, a real life outside of the history books. I think that's very important and I like the way it brings it alive. And this was very important to Ambassador Samuel Moncada as well, that we make these people look lively, real people, not just icons. And um, I'm hoping that, with the experience of this painting, I'm hoping that I could do more on South American history, because it's a fascinating subject and very relevant to what's happening now, you know, with the changes in the global economy and the shift of balance in the world.